Hello, virtual family. Uh, greetings from uh, an undisclosed location adjacent to the uh, Seattle-Tacoma airport. Uh, I'm getting ready to ship out. Uh, it's been a, about two, maybe two months since I last posted a video, so I thought I'd give you guys an update because um, I'm going to be gone for about, you know, four to five months, depending on if we can get reliefs. So, yeah, the last couple of months have been been interesting. Uh, Joanne and I uh, were in La Paz uh, for about, about three and a half months. Um, the last time I talked, she had broken her ribs, uh, and we were hunkering down because of the, the COVID-19. Um, her ribs are healed and she is doing awesome. Uh, she's back in La Paz right now. Um, yeah, so we hunkered down for a month, uh, and she, uh, recuperated and I finished book two. In fact, got that off to a dear friend of mine and former professor up in Alaska, uh, Dr. Guy Bernico. His partner is a fantastic editor and gave me some incredible feedback. So yeah, I spent the quarantine in, um, in La Paz uh, finishing that book and yeah, working out and doing some stuff, but we had to stay mostly on the boat. Um, Joanne healed. And then we came back to, we flew into Tijuana on June 25th, uh, went across the border, caught a train to San Diego, and hunkered down there for two weeks for the 14-day uh, self-quarantine. And the shock, the culture shock between the U.S. and La Paz was incredible, um, very different in response to COVID. Um, in La Paz, the uh, the people really um, took COVID seriously, social distance, distancing, you know, sanitizing hands, and definitely wearing masks. In fact, all of the businesses were strict in requiring masks and social distancing, and they would do temperature checks for the most part. So it was a pretty serious thing. Um, coming to the United States, it was quite a bit more lax and quite a bit of disrespect. In fact, last night, you know, I'm, I'm walking along the uh, airport boulevard, it's Highway 99, uh, coming back to drop off the rental, walking back to the hotel in this undisclosed location. And, you know, a guy was running without a mask and I decided to, you know, walk on the, on the shoulder of the, of the highway, which was, you know, I had, I had about five feet between me and any car. And then there was this muscle car coming at me, and it was, I had plenty of space between that car and with me, but what he did is he swerved into me as if he was gonna, gonna hit me, just to, you know, I didn't flinch, whatever. <laughs> what an idiot. Anyway, and I, I, I encountered, not, not that severe, but just people treating other people inhumanely and with a lot of disrespect. It, it's, it's, uh, it's sad to see. So anyway, yeah, it's a big difference between Mexico and the United States and just the civility. And it's going to be interesting to see what's going on in South Korea when I, when I fly out in. Well, I got to go to the airport in about, an, uh, about a half an hour. So it's going to be interesting to, to see the difference. And I'll be going into quarantine another 14 days. So I'll probably post a couple of things about the juxtaposition between like the United States and, and South Korea with quarantine. Maybe we'll see. I got, I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> I get to stay in a room and the only time you can open the door is for food. <laughs> and that's it. You're in, in the, in quarantine for, uh, for two weeks. So anyway, it should be interesting. And I got a lot of projects. Uh, in fact, every time I ship out, I, uh, 
identify major goals that I want to do. So my major goal, number one, is to get the edits from, from Greta um, and really retool book number two. Uh, and book number two is going to be, it, it's different than book number one. Book number one was told in the, in the first person. Um, book number two is told in the third person limited perspective. But there's a number of perspectives, not just one person, but but a number of perspectives going on. So I'm going to work retooling that. So that's my number one goal. My number two goal is to to play my my ukulele. I, I actually got a new ukulele that sounds phenomenal. Um, to play jazz ukulele, uh, to really work on that. Uh, and and it, it's it's exciting because the tone is much richer and deeper than my second ukulele, which was a travel ukulele. It was like the the that ukulele was about that thick about an inch and a quarter thick at the at the back and about an inch thick up forward by the neck um so the the, the tone on that ukulele was a little bit more tinny it was an electric ukulele so i could plug it in this is too but this one is about three and a half inches thick uh throughout and it's a uh it's a jazz ukulele so it's it's it sounds phenomenal at least according to my ears Anyway, so I'm going to work on jazz. And then the third goal is, is to keep training karate and working out. Um, this ship is a little different than the last ones that I've been on for five years. In fact, it, it's a, I'm going to be on a, it's about a 300 foot tanker that carries JP-5, which is jet fuel. Uh, so military bases all around the Western Pacific. And so we're going to be traveling and it's a hard working ship. I was on this six, six years ago and it was a great experience and it's hard work uh so i might not i won't have as much time as i've had on the other ships that i've been on to work on these goals but i'm going to try to fit them into uh, the work that, that we're going to be doing and i hope the captains are the same that we had a great time on that ship uh, awesome awesome captains and the crew is phenomenal so we'll see what happens i'm, I'm actually looking forward to it uh, so yeah, quarantine, those are the three goals. Um, and usually what I do before I ship out, and I've done this every time I've shipped out over the last six years, I usually get a hotel right by the airport before I ship out. Uh, this time I've, I've been in actually this hotel for three, three years and, uh, I get points because our boat was in uh, San Diego at the Marriott Marquis Marino Hotel. So we had our boat moored there. So this is for free. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful hotel. It is, but it's, it's nice to, uh, actually enjoy a good night's sleep and then be able to ship out. Let me give you a little bit of a, a view of this, of this room. And then I, and by the way, I don't get, I don't get paid to, uh, to do this. So yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty, it's pretty nice. Yeah. Here's my sea bag. There's my desk right there. That little bag right there. That's my carry on. I've changed, I've changed my gear so far. And that's the room. So anyway, shipping out. It's, uh, it's actually been a little bit of an ordeal this time. Uh, in fact, yeah, it was a little bit last time. So we go through, um, so like uh, June, June 25th is when we got back. We did the um, two week quarantine and then I had small arms training. So th th getting a job and, and getting a ship uh, with this organization it, it's a military sea lip command, merchant marines, uh, is pretty intense. Um, so we, we go through small arms training, get trained in, you know, retrained every year. You have to recertify. So get recertified in the nine millimeter meter Beretta. It's an uh, M1A or an M14 and the shotgun. So every year you got to meet a certain score, you pass, you get on the ship, you don't pass, you don't get on the ships. Especially, well, actually for the nine millimeter. 
do that for a week. And they would test us every day when we came in, temperature check. Um, successfully complete that. Flew up to Seattle uh, on the t 17th or something like that. Caught the ship on the 20th, uh, Monday. And then you go through these uh, medical evaluations. So, yeah, passed everything on the medical evaluation except, and this happened last year, except for the blood pressure. So last year, my blood pressure spiked, and what it was was I, I was like, I had some allergies, like pollen and stuff, and uh, there's, it, something was going on, and I, and I took some like Benadryl or something like that, and uh, my blood pressure uh, spiked, so I got off that, and then my blood pressure went down. This, this year, the same thing happened, but I was not doing any kind of over-the-counter uh, allergy stuff. Uh, and it was like, holy smokes, what's going on? And so usually what I do before a medical slash drug test is, you know, you, you don't drink anything and you'd be really good. You drink a lot of water, blah, blah, blah. I did my usual routine and... Sure enough, the blood pressure spiked, and I was like, what the hell is going on? So I went back the next day to get a retest where you had to do three in a row to make it under like 140 over 90. And I know that's high. And it's like, holy shit, yeah, that's, that's high. And it was fine except for one reading was one, it was, you know, 130 over 92, two points above what it should be after three readings. And it's like, it's still unacceptable. And it's like, wow, what's going on? So I went back, went to sleep that night at around, you know, nine, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. Yeah, 10 o'clock. And I woke up at three with a pounding headache. And I go, whoa, what's going on? I, 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 <laughs> But I had been abstaining from alcohol. So what happened was when we were on the ship or on our boat in, in La Paz, we geared up to sail out to the Panama Canal and we had a lot of provisions, including a, a bunch of alcoholic red wine while we're sailing. Two drinks a night, usually no problem. Well, this time I drank a little bit more. And so over two, <laughs> two months in uh, quarantine, and I, I know people have done this. Uh, yeah, you drink a little bit more and stuff like that. Sure enough, I'd been abstaining from alcohol and what I was going through was uh, alcohol withdrawal because after I got this pounding headache, I, I, I started Googling stuff and it was like, whoa, what have I done differently? Bingo. So your blood pressure spikes to compensate for the lack of alcohol and then it goes down. So after the headache abated, in the afternoon, I went back, got a blood pressure reading and it was fine. Perfect. Got back on the ship, or I got tested, sent in the information, and now here we are. So the bottom line there in that story is, yeah, alcohol can be uh, can be uh, detrimental. Interesting. Yeah. So, and I feel great. I mean, I, I feel awesome. So I'm looking to ship out. Um, what I'm thinking of doing is uh, comparing, like I did with La Paz and with the United States, what's going on with quarantine in uh, South Korea, and also how people are adjusting. When I was in South Korea, all the years that I've been there, most people actually wear face masks the whole time uh, when they're out in public. It's part of the culture, and it's different. It's seems to be getting more part of the culture here in the U.S. Um, but yeah, I'll do a little bit of, of a comparison between what's going on there and what's going on here, and uh, I'll check in later. Anyway, it's uh, going to be difficult on this ship to do anything consistently, but as you know, I'm not very consistent as it is, so things shouldn't change. <laughs> I'll try to stay in touch. Uh, in the meantime, you guys stay safe. And uh, enjoy life while it lasts. I'll talk to you later.